All right, and we back. Going to talk some more college football. The last video was really long. This one is definitely not going to be as long as last week's due to the fact that there's literally only one week to talk about. Um, but yeah, we're just going to talk about a bunch of the games, the top 25 stuff, and then some games to look forward to. There's a lot more games to look forward to than I think people realize. Yeah, let's start off with some Conference USA stuff on Tuesday. FIU played Liberty. To me, the fact that FIU even kept pace with Liberty is a huge sign for them. Flip side, not necessarily as good of a sign for Liberty, but at the end of the day, you're still undefeated. New Mexico State took on Jacksonville State. Jacksonville State beat the hell out of them. In the first one I did, I talked about quarterback Tyler Huff. But to me, just having college football games almost every day and, and football games every day between you know NFL and college football, so fun. Coastal Carolina took on James Madison on a Thursday. I imagine if you were watching the primetime game between the Falcons and the Buccaneers, you didn't see this. But at the end of the day, um, again, I do have notes here. So if you see me looking over here, that's kind of what I'm looking for. It's Coastal Carolina, they're really reeling with the loss of Grayson McCall. Obviously, Jimmy Chabot went to Liberty two years ago. But James Madison, they're super aggressive as a football team. And it's been super fun to watch. They're going to be a tough out if they make it to the playoffs. Utah took on Arizona State. Arizona State upset Utah. This was a game. Arizona State, uh, Cam Scadabo, I think that's his name. I, don't, I just know him as Scadabo. Absolute stud absolute stud. Kenny Dillingham is an electric coach. Utah sticking with Cam Rising when he was clearly compromised was a mistake. A terrible mistake. He had no zip on the ball. It, he was literally just like trying to throw it like lofted over teams or lofted over defenders, excuse me. Um, Arizona State 5-1. and one. Sneakily one of the best teams in the Big 12. Big 12 is wide open. There are so many. It's just, it's such a roller coaster of a league. In, in Arizona State, they're still unranked, but if you told me they were the Big 12, I wouldn't be shocked. South Carolina took on Alabama, and to me, this is this has nothing to do with Alabama. Lenora Sellers made two critical mistakes. One, the two-point conversion. I know it's a tough throw, but you got to have it. And then, you know, on the final drive as well, like, he just, it just sucks that South Carolina wasn't able to win this game. They should have. They played that game so well. Clemson took on Wake Forest. There really isn't much to talk here about Wake Forest. Clemson, I mean, they look much better. Since I think they lost to Georgia 34-3, I think they've outscored their opponents by like 140 points over the next four weeks. or so, I think it's four or five weeks. So they're averaging like a 30-point blowout each week since then. They look much better. They're in rhythm. Klubnik is playing much better. Again, this strikes the conversation how much better is Georgia than Clemson, but I digress. Missouri went to Massachusetts. It's a weird game. Um, they had a nice bounce back game. There's really not much to talk about. They kind of they annihilated the Minutemen. Texas took on Oklahoma. Here is one of the games that I want to talk about a little bit more. Um, Quinn Ewers came back. Obviously, he was a little rusty, but as the game progressed, he got better. He looked fine in the second half. Obviously, the first half, especially the first quarter, he was a little rusty, but whatever. At the end of the day, you got to give Texas credit that they do. Um, Oklahoma's offense needs to figure out an identity. I, I don't know what's going That defense is championship caliber, but the offense, I don't think it'd win a 6A high school title in, in Texas. It's just so brutal, and I don't understand. Obviously, that's an exaggeration, but I don't understand how they don't have an identity. And obviously, Texas, they're still the team to beat. The number one team in the country. They look great. Defensively, they were fine all game. As much as it pains me to say, it is still Texas's team. Penn State took on USC. And if you didn't see this game because you're watching uh, Texas, Oklahoma, you missed out. At the end of the day, oh, thank God, I thought I was stop recording. Um, Penn State needed every bit of the Tyler Warren game to win that game. He was everywhere. I think he, I think he lined up. I think I saw it on the broadcast. He played snaps at tight end, receiver, quarterback, running back, and center in that game. Center. I mean, he's just a stud. He's one of the most multi-faceted, versatile players in college football, if not the. And he's one of the reasons Penn State's the third best team in the country. Stanford took on Notre Dame. Wasn't much of a game. I mean, obviously, Notre Dame looks continually better and better. But the best part of these games are the announcers. I love the NBC crew. No Eagle obviously called the um, the Oregon game, but the, the crew that does the NBC games, they're fantastic. Cal took on Pitt. Pitt, undefeated. I believe they're 6-0. Listen. You can't take wins away, and all that matters is getting a win at the end of the day, but they're playing with fire. Same thing with Purdue and Illinois. Illinois has dropped a game, but at the end of the day, finding a way to win after nearly blowing this game, crucial. And at the end of the day, you're 5-1. and one. You have a tough stretch, stretch coming up. You host Michigan this week, and you go to Oregon. But listen, if I'm Illinois, there's a chance you make a run at the Big Ten title. Arizona took on BYU. It's surprising to say that not Arizona is the cream of the crop in the Big 12, but it's BYU. Fafita, the quarterback for Arizona, is much better than he's been playing, but Arizona needs to figure it out fast. Defensively, they just get gashed, and offensively, they seem really out of rhythm. I can't tell if that's with it because I'm a new head coach or what, but they're just not as good as they were last year. Mississippi State took on Georgia. If you watch this game, obviously Georgia kind of had a, a significant lead the entire time, but Mississippi State's probably the best 1-5 team in the country, which, again, isn't much of a consolation, but they're reeling, obviously, the death of Mike, Mike Leach. They're still kind of rebuilding as a program, finding out who they are, but their offensive play calling was really impressive against Georgia, especially in the second half. Florida took on Tennessee. I mean, obviously, this game was much closer than people anticipated. Um, James Pierce ripping the ball away on um, the goal line wins Tennessee that game. I mean, saving that touchdown is huge. We got a couple of ranked 
game some more. Ohio State took on Oregon, game of the year. This was an incredible game. All the explosives. Will Howard, oh my God, he trained at the Dak Prescott School of Awareness. That final play is brutal. It's just brutal to watch in hindsight and, and just watch on replay. On Oregon side, Tez Johnson and James Jordan, or excuse me, Jordan James, are absolute studs. They're absolute studs. And to me, I think these two teams have a chance to meet again in the Big Ten Championship or the playoffs if another Big Ten team doesn't get in the way of Ohio State. But I think Oregon's going no matter what. They're so good. And then next up, Ole Miss LSU. The home crowd is the reason LSU won this game. That Death Valley at night is a different beast. Brian Kelly undefeated in home games at night in Death Valley. That's a really weird specific statistic. But, I mean, listen, the overtime possession for Ole Miss was sad. There were so many times where Ole Miss couldn't communicate, where there was offensive line false starts, receivers not knowing what they're doing. LSU is an upset away from playing the championship game. I think because I think the only game they have left that I think they'll probably lose is Alabama. You upset Alabama, you're 11 and one with a perfect SEC record. Assuming they take care of business against the teams they should take care of. We got three more games. All of these in the Big 12 or the Mountain West. Big 12 after party, replacing Pac-12 after dark. Listen, I understand it's not as cool. I wish the Pac-12 was still here. I hope when the Pac-12 comes back in the next two, three years that it's as cool as it was before. But for now, West Virginia turnovers cost them the game. But the uniforms are cool. Iowa State's got some cool uniforms. Listen, Iowa State had this game pretty much handedly. And I think they're the second best team in the Big 12, if not the best team in the Big 12. Kansas State, Colorado. Listen, I have no, I do not want to compliment Kansas State. It's cool that they won this week. Shiloh Sanders is fucking terrible, dude. He is trash. The defense is so much better when he's not on the field. He is like a two-legged horse. He, they're so much better without him, bro. So much better without him. Finally, nightcap, Boise State, Hawaii. First time I actually passed the Hawaii test this year. First time I tried to do it, I did it. Went all day. Yeah, Ashton Janey is just, I mean, there's nothing else I can say that hasn't been said. Like, there's just nothing else I can say. He's legitimately like a 99 overall creative player that they just threw into college football. He's so good. Next up, I want to talk about the top 25 teams that we have. Obviously, uh, with the emergence of Army and Navy, they actually jumped into the top 25. Both Oklahoma and Utah drop out. Navy comes into 25. I think right now they're 5-0. and 5-0. and I think they're going to go 10-2. Unfortunately, I hate to be a, a parade raider. Parade rainer? However you phrase it. I think they lose to Notre Dame, and I think they lose to Army. I still think they're going to compete for the American Championship because their loss to Army is going to come after the American Championship championship and Notre Dame is a non-conference game so they'll be theoretically 11 and 0. The loss to Army that I'm referring to specifically is the Army Navy game not the potential American Conference Championship. They're a good team. I think they're going to compete with the American Championship. There's really not much to say about Navy. Michigan. I said this last time. They're going to go 6 and 6. They're going to lose to Illinois this week. They're going to lose to Oregon the following week. I think they're going to lose to India and I th- they're definitely not going to beat Ohio State. Um, I understand like, this team is just the offense. It's just the offense. They have to get better if they want to compete. Defensively obviously Will Johnson, Mason Graham, Kenneth Grant Offensively, they have the pieces. You know, Carlson Loveland's a stud. Donovan Edwards is a stud. Khalil Mullins has been fantastic. But it's like the quarterback position has just been so bad. So bad. Next up, I want to talk Army. Army, again, this is a team I think goes 11-1. and They're 6-0 and right now, I think. I don't think they've had their bye yet. I think they lose to Notre Dame. I hate being the bearer of bad news. I just don't think Notre Dame loses either of these teams. Like, I just don't. However, Notre Dame is a non-conference game. I think they win the American Championship. Um, obviously, I think they're going to beat Navy. I don't know if that would get them in the playoffs, which kind of sucks because it'd be really fucking cool to see Army or Navy or maybe even both in the playoffs. But um, I think you have to win out if you're either of these teams or one of them, right? Because I think Boise State is just having that kind of a year. Next up, Illinois. They're 22. I think they go 11-1 and right now. They're only um, – excuse me. I think they go 10-2. and They're only lost this season is to Penn State. Um, I think they lose to Oregon, unfortunately. But I still think they're going to compete for a Big Ten championship. You know, I don't think they'll make it in. I still think it'll be Ohio State, Penn State, or Oregon, or any combination of those three. Um, but, yeah, I think Illinois is a 10-win season for the Illini. There's a chance you sneak into the playoffs if – you know, I don't know. Probably not. But 10-2, and two, two lost Big Ten team against – you know, theoretically, two of the top four teams in the country. Next up, I want to talk about SMU. They're ten, or excuse me, they're five and one right now. They have a pretty late schedule. Unfortunately, I do think they're going to drop the game to Pitt. Their offense, led by right guard Logan Parr, is awesome, but their defense is a major question mark. Um, that's the thing to me. I, I, you know, they're a great team. Ten wins in the in, in a new power conference for the SMU Mustangs. Nobody thought that they were going to do this good. I know there was a lot of chatter and some preseason buzz, but this is a great team. And listen, if you're able to beat Pitt, the rest of your schedule is pretty fucking easy. Speaking of, Pitt, they're undefeated right now. Playing with fire against Cal, we talked about it. I think their their schedule's pretty late, too. I think they beat SMU. I do think they lose to Clemson. I think Clemson's a wagon. Like, I think they're much better than people realize. I think Georgia's just that much better. I think they're going to lose to Clemson. But I think they're going to compete for the ACC championship game. Like, right? Like, because 
you know, if you lose to Clemson, I assume Clemson wins out. Their loss is to uh, Georgia. I don't see a team challenging Miami, so I think those are the two teams that make it. But, you know, if Pitt upsets Clemson, anything's possible. Next up, Missouri. Missouri just blasted UMass. Great look for them. I still think they go 10 2. I think they lose to Alabama. Luther Burden's obviously a stud, but the defense is a major question mark. How will they play against high level SEC teams? Obviously, they played well against UMass. That's the question mark. At 18, we got Ole Miss. Listen, Ole Miss right now is, I believe, 4 and 2. Um, they still have to play Georgia. I don't think they win that game. They're a good team. Their defense has improved, but they just need to continue to get better on that side of the ball. Offense is just a little inconsistent, but again, Jackson Dart, Trey Harris, you still have Walter Nolan on defense. Like, this is a great team, but again, when you play in the SEC, you just can't. Like, it's. There are so many teams in the SEC and just all of these four conferences, the big ones, where you see some teams with just gauntlet schedules Oklahoma, Michigan, um, not necessarily Ole Miss, but LSU plays a tough one, where you see teams like Georgia or like Miami where you play just fucking cupcake schedules. And it's all in conference. It's just the way the schedules break. And that's just super unlucky for a team like Ole Miss. Again, nine and three is nothing to scoff at, but when you have championship expectations, like that's a tough, that's a tough scene. Uh, number 17, Kansas State is our first, I believe our first big 12 team. Um, I think they're gonna go 10 and two. I know they're five and one, I believe. I think they lose to Iowa State. I think they're gonna compete for the big 12 title. I think it's probably gonna be a rematch between them and Iowa State, but they had a good, they had a good win, but uh, they're just a, I just think Iowa State's better. And then Indiana at number 16. They're undefeated right now. They, again, another team I talked about that I referenced, that cupcake schedule. They're 6-0. and The only team game I think they're going to lose is, is uh, Ohio State, right? I think they're going to 11-1, compete with the Big Ten Championship. But they're not even close to Penn State, Ohio State, or Oregon in terms of, like, the, the quality of the team. Next up is Boise State. I think they go 11-1. Obviously, Ashton JT is an absolute monster. If not the best offensive player in college football, one of the best offensive players in college football. Defense needs to continue to play at a high level. They played really good against Hawaii. That was really just a weird game. It's Every time you go to Hawaii, it's just you never know what's going to happen. But I think, yeah, the defense is going to be the bigger question mark for this team. Number 14, I got Texas A&M. Unfortunately, I think they go 9-3. and three. They're 5-1 right now, but I think they lose against LSU. And then to Texas, I just I can't see them beating Texas. Obviously, uh, Nick Scorton, the defensive end, is a stud. But the offense needs to get more consistent. And, it, you know, if they can take down LSU, then maybe my opinion changes on the Texas game. But for now, I think they go 9-3. and three. And listen, I understand it's the SEC and you're trying to win championships. Not that every team isn't, but it's more of an expectation in the SEC. But 9-3 and three in Michael's first year, that's not a disappointment. And if you think it is, you're wrong. Next up, we got BYU. I think they go undefeated. I think, B again, this is another team. Can they avoid a letdown? You don't play a really tough schedule. Theoretically, assuming you can't uh, you afford a letdown. You don't play Iowa State. You don't play Kansas. You already beat Kansas State, excuse me. You don't play Iowa State. Utah doesn't look that good. I don't even know who the rest of their schedule is, but I looked at it, and I was, like, not impressed. Notre Dame at 12. I think they go 11-1. I don't think they lose a game. They do play Army and Navy down the stretch. They play Florida State. Florida State sucks, right? Like, dude, you could play. You could put me somewhere on that field, and we have a chance to win. Obviously, this team's loaded, especially on the defensive side, right? Benjamin Morrison, Xavier Watts, Howard Cross, offensively Mitchell Evans. The offense needs to continue to improve. There are still ups and downs and highs and lows, but they're a good team, and their schedule lines up pretty nicely. Number 11, we got Tennessee. They are 5-1 and one right now. Unfortunately for the Volunteers, you still have to play Alabama this week. And then Georgia, I don't think you win either of those games. You know, James Pierce is obviously a study. He's the reason they beat Florida. But the offense, like, the first three or four weeks of this season for Tennessee, they looked incredible offensively. They had conference play, and it's like a completely different team showed up. The offense has been enough, but the defense has been the difference. And the offense has to step it up against real competition. You're not going to beat Alabama or Georgia playing like that. Next up, Clemson. They're 5-1. and one. I don't think they lose a game down the stretch. Their defense, obviously, uh... Barrett Carter, Peter Woods is back. The offense he's improved. It's going to be interesting to see how it holds up. I think they'll be fine in ACC play, but I think it'll be really tested once we hit the playoffs. Next up, Iowa State, the final Big Ten team, or excuse me, the final Big 12 team. I think they go undefeated. They don't play um, a tough schedule, not at all. I don't think they'll have any problem with Kansas State. They don't play BYU. Can they avoid a letdown? That's the big question mark. LSU, number eight, they're five and one. They only lost to USC. Unfortunately for LSU, I think they go 10 and two. I don't think they beat Alabama. I know it's going to be a lot closer. I just, I. I would rather be wrong betting against betting with Alabama than wrong betting against them. I mean, obviously, offensively for LSU, Mason Taylor, Will Campbell, Emory Jones, defensively, Hill Perkins is a stud. The defense just needs to continue to show that they're at a high level. They played well against Ole Miss. Just got to do it on a more consistent basis. Speaking of Alabama, I don't think this team loses another game. I think they go 11 and 1. This team, I'm looking just on the offensive line alone, I'm looking at it right here. Tyler Booker, uh, Jaden Roberts, Parker Brailsford. You obviously have Jalen Milrow. Defensively, Deontay Lawson and Malachi Moore. This team is loaded. Defense needs to continue to play at a higher level. Um, they played good against 
South Carolina, but just like I don't think they should have been in that game. It's just this Alabama team doesn't feel as dominant as it used to be, and I can't tell if that's a direct result of college football in general or, you know, NIL portal, people being able to move whenever, whatever. You know what I mean? I, I just can't tell if it's that or if it's just Alabama just isn't as good as it used to be. Speaking of teams not being as good as they used to be, Miami. This team is better than they used to be. I, I think they go undefeated. Their AC schedule lines up pretty nicely. Obviously, Cam Ward, uh, Xavier Ostrepo, Damian Martinez. Defensively, you have Ruben Bain. Can they can they avoid a letdown? That's the thing I continue to say about certain teams is you have the ability to go undefeated. Can you avoid a slip-up? Next up at five, we got Georgia. They're 5-1 and one now. Unfortunately, they're going to Texas this week or next week. I don't know when it is. Um, you're losing that game. I, I, I It's going to be a great game, and I'm looking forward to it. But I just, I you know, even though... Carson Beck is starting to play a little better. You have Dylan Fairchild and Tate Ratledge on the offensive line. Malachi Starks, Michael Williams on defense. Defense needs to show up against the elite teams, right? You want to win a championship, you got to beat Alabama. You got to beat Texas. You got to beat Michigan. You got to so on and so forth. Your defense has to show up. And against Alabama, it showed up for half, but it, it didn't show up for the whole game. And you have to go on the road to Texas. Number four, Ohio State. Uh, right now, they're 5-1. and one. I'm going to call, some might call it an upset, some might not. I think they lose to Penn State. I think they lose to Penn State. They go to ten and two this season, assuming that Penn State doesn't lose another game, which I don't think they will. I don't. I don't see Penn State, or excuse me, I don't see Iowa State in the Big Ten championship. Ohio State. I keep calling them Ohio State. Yeah, man. I'm just. I mean, offensively, we already know about this team, right? Quinshawn Judkins, Travion Henderson, Mecca Ibuka, Donovan Jackson on the offensive line. Defensively, Tyreek Williams, Jack Sawyer, Caleb Downs, Denzel Burke. Team needs to play more consistently. We saw them play against Oregon. I mean, like it was a good team, but there was just times where they should have. Ryan Day, and I, I, I just can't. I don't know, bro. Ryan Day is the Michael Jordan of James Franklin's. Like I, I don't know how else to describe it. Like I just don't. The team needs to play more consistently. He needs to coach at a higher level. His game management is not that good. Listen. Flipping it over to Penn State, I think they're going defeated, right? Obviously, um, excuse me, offensively, Tyler Warren is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Nick Singleton's a stud. Kevin Winston, Abdul Carter, Denai Dennis Sutton. I could go on and on. For them, avoid a letdown. I think if they beat Ohio State, there's nobody else on that schedule that can play with them. Oregon, same thing. You know, offensively, obviously, Dylan Gabriel's a stud. Tess Johnson, um, Evan Stewart. You left tackle Evan Connerly, or excuse me, Josh Connerly, and then Jabbar Muhammad on defense. Can they avoid a letdown? You got a really tough, you played Purdue this week on a short week, then you host Illinois and then go to Michigan. If you can get through that, you should run the table. But the team to beat is the number one team in the country, Texas. Kelvin Banks is going to be the, probably the top tackle drafted, if not one of the. Quinn Ewers is a stud. Can you avoid a letdown? Georgia, you play Georgia, you play Texas A&M. If you can get through both those games, avoid enough say so you're going to go undefeated. Games, and I want to talk about some games to look forward to. Obviously, this week, week eight, there's actually a couple of really good games on a Friday night. Number two, Oregon goes to Purdue on a short week. It's not going to be easy. Oklahoma State travels to number 13, BYU. And then we have the Saturday slate. Saturday slate is still just as good. You have Alabama, Tennessee. You have Michigan, Illinois. You have Georgia, Texas. Those are going to be some great games. Week nine, you got even more. On a Thursday, Syracuse goes to number 20, Pitt. And then on Friday, number 15, Boise State hosts UNLV. It's going to be fun to see any in primetime. Saturday, you got a loaded slate. Number 22, Oregon goes to, or excuse me, Illinois goes to number two, Oregon. Number 19, Missouri goes to number seven, Alabama. Number eight, LSU goes to number 14, Texas A&M. Number 12, Notre Dame takes on number 25, Navy in Navy. Listen, if you want to make the playoffs, Navy, that's the game. Week 10, again, primetime. San Diego State goes to number 15, Boise State. It's fun to see Ash and Janey. And then you have the Saturday slate. Number two, Oregon, number 24, Michigan. Number four, Ohio State, number three, Penn State. And number 20, Pitt. I mean, it's number 21 SMU. That's going to decide which one of those teams is, might have a chance to win the ACC. Week 11, all games on a Saturday. Number 5, Georgia. Number 18, Ole Miss. That's pretty much the final game for Ole Miss that if you lose, you're out. Number 7, Alabama. Number 8, LSU. I assume that's the night game in Death Valley. It's going to be such a fun game. And then number 24, Michigan. Number 16, Indiana. If you're Indiana, that's the game to prove you're legit. If you're Michigan, that's the game to prove that you can come back. Week 12, Tennessee goes to Georgia. Obviously, listen, Tennessee... That's probably a make or break game for Tennessee. And honestly, with the way Georgia's been playing, it's probably a make or break game for Georgia. Number 20, Pitt goes to number 10, Clemson. I messed that up. Clemson's actually going to Pitt. If you're Pitt, you win that game, you win. You have the inside track to win the ACC. Uh, week, that was week 12. Week 13, Indiana. Th- these last couple of weeks before the final week, kind of just kind of light. Um, Indiana takes on Ohio State. If you're Indiana, again, that back-to-back with Michigan and Ohio State, if you can win both of those, you're definitely going to win the Big Ten, or at least be in the game. And then finally, number 23 Army goes to number 12 Notre Dame. Again, if you're Army, that's the game. And then finally, a week of Thanksgiving. Oregon State goes to number 15 Boise State. That's on a Friday. Mississippi State goes to Ole Miss. They're not playing the Egg Bowl on Thanksgiving. They're actually playing it on Friday this week or this year. I'm not sure why. Um, Georgia Tech goes to number 5 Georgia. And then we have Rivalry Week. Texas goes to Texas A&M. Kansas State goes to Iowa State. Didn't know that was a rivalry. And Michigan goes to Ohio State. And then on top of all that, those are the best games. 
there's a chance that week 16, two weeks later after conference championship week, we have a fucking ranked service academy matchup between number 25 Navy and number 23 Army. We have so many good games coming down the line. And again, I just wanted to talk about college football. I love talking about college football. I love talking about regular football too. Um, at the end of the day, if you want to see me do more of this stuff, make sure to comment down below. Make sure to like and subscribe. And YouTube thinks you're going to like this video. Find out if they're right.